Yo, what is going on, everybody? It's the Ultra Kaiju here with another exciting Jurassic World review for you guys. And today, yeah, we got more Jurassic World figures. Sad part is I have one that I'm planning to open, and I still haven't opened it yet. And I already got this guy before I could even open that guy. Yeah. So, if you guys are new to this channel, then you do not know what i'm about to talk about but real quick just to recap for you guys i've been keeping up with my channel for a while so i've been on a, a jurassic world hunting spree because i've gotten five figures amongst two months actually a month and a half five whole jurassic world figures all of them round up together would pretty much be 85 dollars. so i'm a big money spender um that's i'm saying you'd think that i'm saying that to sound cool but <laughs> it's a hard life, but I am a very big fan of Ankylosaurus, but I was never able to get the first release, Roar of Ors, uh, Ankylosaurus from Fallen Kingdom, Mattel's first release, and Wave of Jurassic World figures, so this is the perfect substitute because I waited and waited after the two before releases, because if you don't, if you didn't already, my favorite, my favorite herbivore is indeed, yes, Ankylosaurus. Which means that this is also my second favorite. This is my second herbivore figure, and yes, indeed, my favorite herbivore figure in my collection. So, like I was saying before, for a little bit, I've been just really up and ahead with all these Jurassic World figures, and this is my this is my favorite herbivore figure, my favorite herbivore dinosaur figure, and my favorite carnivore, being the Spinosaurus from the Camp Cretaceous. Cam Cretaceous first release that I got both my favorite dinosaurs, so yay. Also, we're just gonna take a little quick turn to the back of his books. We have Roar Attack, Ankylosaurus, Bumpo the Bumpy, three levels of sound, and that'll be interesting. Other figures in the series, Limbo and uh, Metriacanthosaur, no, that's not, I forgot his name, but Limbo and the other guy, I might get... I make I might get one member of the Baryonyx trio probably. It'll end up being chaos when he, once his figure comes out because he looks more so his paint his paint scheme is more so Baryonyx than Grim and Limbo. So chaos will probably be the one I buy out of those out of the three uh Baryonyx uh you know Baryon Baryonyx brothers or the ba Baryonyx trio. So also the sad part about this figure is that I don't need it. I don't even need to cut the thing, the little straps off. That's, I mean, I want Mattel to package their figures this easy, but, you know, I, I would like them to do it, but not so I can steal it, you know. I've done some uh, pretty questionable things in my life before, but I've never tried to steal things. If I was really that desperate, then I'd just ask my parents for money, but they never do, because I'm, they say that I'm too much of a big boy to do it. <laughs> Granted, I am. But yay, we got we got figure out, and he is in a death position. He is laying dead, so we will now raise his mighty graciousness. And whoa, okay, he is. Okay, yeah, he's he's a lot bigger than. Hold well, on, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna do a real quick. Uh, you know, for that scene in season two or season three, I do believe. Or yeah, yeah, that okay, that makes more sense. Sorry, I'm just. Because the the scene from you know where Ben and Bumpy team up against Toro, you know, I, I just just wondering in the packaging like, how is this gonna come up to scale to scale with Toro? So first of all, we're gonna look at his beautiful his beautiful detailing and sculpt along with paint. So I've also been using this now. So so first of all, for his color scheme, I do want to say that his head. And his body are different shades of blue. This is more of a light blue, and this is more of an aqua blue. So I just want to. It also looks a little, a lot more plain than on camera. On camera, if the paint scheme looks even better, especially with the head, that looks even better too. Hmm. Also, the tail, uh, the spikes in the middle of his tail weren't painted. I don't know why, but I do really admire the scale. I mean, this is the same figure, just the only difference is you know with other encalisters different paint in a uh, different accent action feature and yes the different horns i will get on to that in a little bit so also 
I do want to say that the sculpting is very beautiful. I do like how they did the spikes over here. They're rubber and also I feel like that they can get teared off at any given at any given moment. But yeah, also they are yes, yeah, so if you're aware, if you're a parent out there, I don't know why you'd be watching meh out of all people for um uh, toys that you'd like to buy your uh, child but yeah the, if you are a parent out there just i don't i don't know why mainly people around my age would be watching these videos but these are indeed rubbery spikes god that looks these look dirty around here oh they're actually pretty clean in person but they are made out of rubber so no serious injuries unless you really shove these spikes in your eye then yeah you might regret that but you know Aside from that, there really isn't too much to harm yourself. I mean, unless if you really, you know, start to bash in with people. You know, you're really using this guy as a weapon. Okay, now that we've got actually I'm covering that up, we'll do that. We'll do it at the end, and we'll also do the uh, uh, action feature in the end, too. Here is his underside. I do like how they do the shading on the prototype. The shading ones don't mention, yes, it is a Kylo Ren lightsaber. No, I'm not a Kylo Ren fan. I'm a Darth Vader fan. I know that everybody will destroy it and will want to hunt me down if I'm a Kylo Ren fan. But, uh, yep, yeah, the detailing on there is uh, pretty nice. I do like how uh, they did the sculpting down there. Even with, yeah, with Hasbro, they would not have added sculpting and detailing down here. But Mattel, you know, Mattel are the boss. They are the boss. I do really like how the painting also bleeds onto the legs. That is really cool. And also, before we exit out of detailing and paint, this the horn up here is larger. And you want to know why? If you've been living under under a rock like I have for most of my years, then I said years and not ears. I know. I know. I, I know. I'm looking at you through the camera. I'm looking at you through the camera. You, you're thinking that I said ears. No, I did not say ears. I said years. Yeah, I see you. I see you. Look at he sees you too. But yes, comparing him real quick to the Happy Meal Bumbo. They uh, please if you've been living under if you've been living under a rock like I have then, uh, yeah. In the lab, like Doctor Wu stated, Doctor Wu stated, uh, Bumpy was given many issues and flaws when he was created. So you know that was a downside to it. And now that we got that out of the way, oh, just to look at his eye. If you really wanted to, then you can, so. Hmm. Okay, so now we're going to move on to our good friend, Scan Code. We'll be doing this before articulation. So if you really wanted to, then you can scan that bad boy into the app. So go ahead and do that, all you little chipmunks out there. And now we're gonna go. Uh, just, this part wasn't painted you know, on the box. Oh, that's because it was the prototype. I'm dumb. Yeah, but this club is indeed painted. Great. Oh, even on the bottom too, huh? Kind of looks like broccoli. Mmm, yummy. Okay, I'm just kidding. I'm not that stupid. So now we're gonna move on to articulation. There's nothing too much to cover here, but his legs all are on a very good ball joint with. Uh, just 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 intake this bread okay this, well, the back legs can do it but they are on a pretty limited ball joint especially with the spikes over here they this one is just on a swivel it's just on a little hinge that just goes up and down I can't really go back so you know this one is ball joint this one isn't I don't know why also just admire this spread real quick sorry if this is a wrong position sorry if this position looks wrong to you but just to show you the spread Eh, not as beautiful as I thought, but this one mainly does the spreading outward. This one is kind of a layback leg, so. And, that, and uh, also, and you, if you wanted to, you can do that. But that's not a part of the action feature. It kind of is, but it not really isn't. So, also, I wanted to just demonstrate articulation on the head. I've been moving it for a bit, too, so it is on a, a very good ball joint. You can crack his neck give him neck aches for days you know he'll probably have to go to the chiropractor and get that fixed but it is on a ball joint he can look up and down he can look side to side he can break his neck again if you really wanted to and then he can go all the way around and do a bunch of crazy stuff for you f to your heart's content we're just gonna quickly move on to 
action features and for that we have sound number one sound number two huh and that was sound number three so so you can get some pretty nice whack in action if you will Yes, very cool indeed, Bumpo. And now to size comparisons. Also, if you're wondering, yes, I forgot to pay my light bill again. It happens. Probably don't need me. So here is you compared to some other dinosaur escape figures in my collection with the Scorpius Rex E750 Danger Pack and the guy that wants to bite my finger off now that this guy start now that this guy entered the arena, the Mega Destroyer Stegosaurus. These are compared to some Pokemon figures in my collection, with the Wicked Cool Toys Blastoise Battle Battle feature figure, and uh, also by Wicked Cool Toys Jazzwares, uh, what do you call it? Twelve inch scale, superposable, not really superposable Venusaur figure thing, Froggy Plant Monster. Here's a compared to some Lego Jurassic World figures in my collection with the T Rex Escape Rexy and Indoraptor Rampage at Lockwood Estate Indoraptor. And finally, here's you compared to some larger figures in my collection with the Cam Cam with the Mattel Camp Cretaceous first release, Control and Conquer Toro, and Imaginex Indoraptor. Also, if you were wondering, yes, he was indeed chomping on a Kenji for his dinner. So overall, for this Bumpo figure, I very much enjoy it. As I have stated before in this crappy video, Bumpy is my favorite, favorite, well, not Bumpy specifically, but the Ankylosaurus is one of my most favorite herbivores. In fact, it is my favorite herbivore, not to confuse anybody. And I really like the color scheme on here, the battle, the uh, battle, oh, uh, no, I'm mixing up with Pokemon toys again. The Action features and articulation on this figure are really cool too, and I just had a really cool, a really awesome time playing with him, and he's just an awesome figure. So yeah, I definitely recommend it if you really need a bumpo to go face to face with your Toro. That's all. See you guys later. So Ultra Kaiju signing off. Reese's Pieces.